What a delight to be here with you today. This is Pastor Gabriel Swaggart, and welcome one of these to one of these daily video blogs. We're going to be uh, dealing with the subject of unforgiveness regarding the Lord's Prayer and forgiving, asking the Lord to forgive us as we forgive others. And uh, let's go. Let's get into it right here today. Reading from uh, the fourth verse of the eleventh chapter of the Gospel of Saint Luke. These are the words of Christ as recorded by Luke, the physician, and he says this, And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. We dealt with yesterday forgiveness and asking the Lord uh, for His forgiveness. And, and really, in my opinion, that shoots down, as I mentioned yesterday, the whole entire theory of sinless perfection, because that's really what it is. It's a theory. The only person who's ever been perfect and sinless is Jesus Christ. No other human has ever been sinless. No other human has ever been perfect. Now, I'll, I'll have to deal with that subject at a later time uh, regarding justification because I'll, I'll say this and then move on. When we come to Christ, God doesn't see us. He sees His Son. His Son is perfect. Therefore, because we're in Christ, we're made perfect, or we are perfect. But it doesn't mean in the natural. It just means that our, our position is in Christ. It is remaining in Christ. It's perfect in Christ. And Christ is perfect. And therefore, that makes me perfect. Now, like I said, it's kind of a confusing thing. I'm not perfect. I'll never be perfect. The only time I'll ever be perfect is whenever my, I have a glorified body where sin will, where, in, where corruption will put on incorruption, mortality will put on immortality. It takes place at the rapture of the church. Uh, anyway, um, so it shoots down the entire theory of sinless perfection. I do not believe in sinless perfection. I do not believe that every Christian or we're all going to arrive at a place of social, of, of, social, of uh, sinless perfection. I don't believe that at all. I believe that we are, as believers, we are always coming short, but our faith must be anchored in Christ and Him crucified to bring about the victory that's needed. Now, okay, now I need a whole other program on that. But then Jesus would talk about not only asking the Lord to forgive us, but asking others to forgive us and forgiving others. Now, this is, a, this is something regarding forgiveness that frankly and sadly most Christians don't practice most Christians do not practice forgiveness they harbor unforgiveness in their hearts toward others for a myriad of reasons they harbor unforgiveness in fact you know Jesus uses the parable about the man who was forgiven little and then forgiven much. The two individuals, one forgiven little, one forgiven much. And the disciples asked him, well, Lord, how, how many times are we to forgive? And in essence, Jesus said unlimited, 70 times 70, but really he was really referring to saying unlimited. There are going to be people, ladies and gentlemen, that are going to wrong you. There are going to be some of your closest neighbors, closest friends, family members, they're going to wrong you because we're human, we're flawed, we're messed up. But as a believer, if we harbor any unforgiveness in our hearts, then God cannot forgive us. That's, that's what His Word is saying. If we forgive others, then that opens the doorway for God to forgive us. If we harbor unforgiveness toward others, then God cannot forgive us. One of the hardest things to do as a believer is to forgive others that wronged you. I know. One of the hardest things for me to do was at times when someone would wrong myself or my family that I would harbor a grudge and I would harbor resentment. But my grandfather made a statement one time that I'll never forget. The Lord told him this because the, uh, there was a situation uh, that I won't go into details, but someone was trying to do, wasn't really trying to do, was, 
was doing everything he could to do my family harm. And my grandfather was praying and was trying to pray for him, but he couldn't. And he was just honest with the Lord and said, Lord, I, you know, I, I, it would be, make me feel better if this guy was just, it wasn't here anymore. And the Lord said this, show him the same grace that I've shown you. When he said that, something clicked into my spirit. And I heard that as a child. But there are people that are going to do you wrong. But if God has extended us so much grace, then we should be able to extend grace to others. One of the, one of the worst things that we can do as a believer, not just really as a believer, but as a human, is harbor unforgiveness. It destroys. When you harbor unforgiveness, it destroys you. It hurts you. It brings you down. And it, it grows worse and worse and worse when you harbor resentment, harbor unforgiveness, when you harbor any of those things and hold on to those grudges. It'll do nothing for you but hurt you. That's why the Lord says for you to forgive those who wrong you. You may not have to... Forgiving others doesn't mean that you've got to be their best friend. It just means you put them into the hands of the Lord. You forgive them and you let the Lord deal with them. You ask the Lord, Lord, help me to forgive that individual. Help me to show them the kindness that you've shown me. Help me to show the grace that you've shown me. The worst thing that you can do as a believer is harbor any ill will towards somebody else. Unforgiveness, resentment, grudges. Now like I said, that doesn't mean that you got to be their best friend. It just means that you release them into the hands of God. You say, Lord, I forgive them. And it could be the most egregious, awful thing that one could imagine. And it could be very difficult and hard to say those words, Lord, I forgive them. But if you ask the Lord, Lord, help me. Help me to forgive. Help me. Lord, you've forgiven me of so much. Help me forgive others. Help me to forgive others. You've just opened that door for the Lord to do a work. By harboring all these ill wills, these, this, this, this resentment, unforgiveness, you've shut the door to God forgiving you. That's really what this text says. It says, there's a statement that I wrote down. I want you to, to read, the, I want you to hear this. If there's unforgiveness in the heart of a person, then all forgiveness from the Lord is stopped. Now, did you hear that? If there is any unforgiveness in the heart of an individual, then all forgiveness is stopped from the Lord. I know it's difficult. It's not going to be easy. But if you're harboring any unforgiveness in your heart towards your neighbor, forgive them. The Lord may tell you to call them. The Lord may tell you to go to them. But at least in your prayer time, say, Lord, Lord, I don't want there to be any bitterness in my heart. I don't want there to be any ill will. Lord, if there's any bitterness in my heart or somebody, Lord, help me to forgive them. Help me to turn it over to you. Help me to forgive them and put them in your hands. And Lord, I, I don't want to harbor any ill will. Things will change. It may not happen overnight, but things will change. That's not something that a lot of Christians want to do is forgive others. But you know, the words of Christ ring true. When He was on the cross, some of His last words that He spoke before He said, Father, it is finished. Into Thy hands I commend my spirit. 
he would look out over the scene and see those who crucified him, the religious leaders. And he would say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We need, in essence, to do the same thing. Lord, help us to forgive. Help us to forgive as you have forgiven us. You have forgiven us of so much. Help me to forgive others of much as well. Now, thank you for being with us here today. Uh, tomorrow we're going to continue on with the subject, and uh, we're going to be dealing with the daily dangers that we face on a daily basis as a believer. We covered God's uh, desires for us uh, in verse 2, in verses 3, verses 4. It deals with our desires. And then, of course, actually verse 3 and 4 deals with our desires. Verse 2 deals with God's interest toward us. 3 and 4 uh, of Luke chapter 11 deals with our desires. And then this last verse that we will cover tomorrow, verse 5, deals with the dangers that we face on a daily basis. And we do face daily dangers on an everyday basis. So be with us. Why don't you subscribe to this program? Tell others about it. And share it as much as you want. Send it to loved ones. Send it to neighbors. Send it to friends. Put it on your social media site. But I believe that this is something that we all need to hear. We love you. God bless you. We will see you next time in the Lord.